Good morning, guys. I just smashed back some coffee, packed up my tent, and I'm on the road again. I am heading towards, I actually don't know where I'm heading. I'm heading towards Whistler. I don't know where I'll end up tonight, but it's a fairly long drive, so we should move. Before we get into today's drive, I should mention that today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. If you're looking for a place to start a travel photography blog or portfolio, Squarespace is a really good spot to start. There's lots of really good blogging tools with a lot of cool features like geotagging, simultaneously posting to your social media, and really clever templates to make portfolios or galleries look really good really easy. So whether you're looking to sell images or just have a really cool place to show them off, Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and you'll get a little bit of a discount on your first purchase. It was another cold night in the tent. Temperatures went well below freezing. Even upon departure at 8 a.m., it's only finely warmed to one degree. But the heated seats are engaged and I'm ready to cover some distance. I am just outside of Kamloops now. A lot of people, I don't think, really know BC. Um, they're very familiar with the Rockies in Alberta and maybe Vancouver, but BC is this incredibly diverse place and it doesn't really seem like that. So I'm gonna draw you a map, or at least try to draw you a map to explain. But essentially, you have the Continental Divide, which is mostly made up of the Rocky Mountains. That splits up Alberta and BC. You have the 49th parallel, of course, the US border, and then you have the coastal mountains that cruise straight up um, the coast, obviously. <laughs> and then you have a whole lot of forest and nothing else up top. And then in the middle, there's like this gap between the Rockies and the coastals that's not mountainous and very dry. And in the south, it's kind of like the Napa Valley of Canada. It's the Okanagan, you've got lakes, you've got vineyards, you've got orchards, you've got all this really cool stuff. And you have a little bit north, it's like the ranch lands around Kamloops and just inland from there as well. And it's very, very dry and very rugged. And you don't have mountains per se, you have a lot of hills like this. And it is beautiful. And to me, it's absolutely beautiful. But it's also not crazy photogenic, so forgive me that I'm kind of just cruising past all of this stuff on my way to the coastal mountains. Uh, no, I won't be photographing the skyline of Kamloops. I've only got like eight days to cover like 2,000, 3,000 kilometers. The drive across the center of BC is longer than it seems on a map, but the views don't hurt. And there's a lot of that quintessentially Canadian vibe going on here that has me reminiscing to when I was young. And yes, I know the shots in today's episode are shaky. Someone kind of forgot to turn on the image stabilization. As I was driving past Lillouette, I saw something. A person sitting on a cliff high above a hairpin on the road. I had to stop to explore. So this is the hairpin. What I saw, and I think I still see, is a person up, not up there, like right there. And I think that could be super cool. Hairpin turn mountain. Maybe looks like a 15 minute walk. I gotta be pretty quick though, because I'm already running really late if I'm gonna hike up a mountain today. Having never spent any time in Lillooet, I have no idea if this is a known spot. But it's unreal. I mean, these views. As I spotted properly, there's an awesome viewpoint here. In fact, there's another photographer up there as well. It's a little bit of a scramble up here and I already took the photo. It's actually nice. I think it's just as nice now as it would be at sunset because of the shadows and the way the light is and because they so rarely get clouds here. It's like desert that I'm not bummed about leaving before sunset. And um, a cool little walk to prep me for the big walk. I'm about an hour and 15 minutes away from Joffrey Lakes. And then I don't know how long the hike is, maybe 5K.
Okay, because I didn't have any plans to do any backcountry camping on this trip, I'm not prepared at all. This tent is not backcountry, it's really heavy. My sleeping bag's heavy, but it's nice and warm. And my backpack's not a backcountry bag. It's just a small camera bag. So I've kind of like retrofit everything to make it work for one night. And I'm going up to Joffrey Lakes. I think it's about five kilometers each way. Yeah, I'm just guessing based on what the map looked like. And uh, it's supposed to be amazing up there and hopefully a little bit warmer than the past couple nights. The past couple nights have been like minus one, minus two. Um, and I'm bringing less clothing this time or less uh, blankets, I guess. I'm also bringing less camera gear. I'm only bringing my 70 to 200 and my 16 to 35 or 15 to 35. So I guess let's go. It is 3.39. So if it takes me three hours to get up there, I've still got time for a sunset, hopefully. Um, and hopefully this setup works. I absolutely love being in the trails in BC. Nothing against Alberta trails. You just have such more variety to the, the greenery in BC. It's like a temperate rainforest here. In fact, it might not just be like a temporary rainforest, I think it is. <laughs> so you get ferns and all sorts of like broadleaf plants and deciduous. It, it's really beautiful in here, absolutely love it. This trail, the Joffrey Lakes, one of the busiest trails. They give out a thousand day passes a day and then limited campsites up top as well. So I have a campsite, there is three lakes. I'm passing the first one now, which is like a one minute walk from the parking lot. I'm not going to stop there now because I want to get up to the top. It said it's 4k to the top, so it's actually not that far. 4k will take me about maybe an hour and a half. I've never been here before and I honestly kind of avoided it over the years. Hearing of the overcrowded trails full of Vancouverites on day trips. But a couple seconds in and I can see why it's so popular. It's stunning and no video clip, no matter how stable, can do it justice. Okay, I made it to the middle lake. This is unreal. The, the blue in this water is just crazy. I think that would make for a really nice photo with the mountains up there, but it says area closed. And of course, I always behave, almost always behave. When it comes to nature, I always behave. So um, yeah, like I said, this is the middle lake. Wow, unreal. And uh, it's not that much farther to the top lake where I'm spending the night, so. Let's keep hiking. Watching the footage, you'll find out what I found out the hard way. This should have been my sunset location. The views from the middle lake are just phenomenal. But I pressed on. Oh, and fun fact, someone taking an Instagram photo on this log fell in literally a minute after I took this clip. Though they look inviting, these blue waters are about as cold as water can get. You know, before it becomes ice. Uh, sometimes I love it when you don't do research because you realize there's things like this along the way. Obviously I meant to say I sometimes love when I don't do research because then I discover things that I didn't know existed. That probably makes more sense than my excited words. Okay, made it to the upper lake. The campsite apparently is still like like a half a kilometer or so that way so i've still got to hike that way we wanted to stop lakeside to check things out and it's awesome a lot of it is protected for good reason but there is this area here with lots of rocks to play with for foreground so this is going to be awesome but first let's go set up the tent Oh man, I did not judge how far it is from the photo spot to the camp spot. It is at least 20 minutes. Um, and I'm just picking out a spot. <laughs> and the way I'm picking out a spot is I'm looking for bear claws. There's no bear claws, I think I'm good to go. <laughs> um, I think this looks like a pretty good spot. So 
and set up the tent and then honestly I'm running out of time for sunset and the reason I came and rushed up here tonight uh, is because there's supposed to be bad weather coming in so tonight might be my only chance at a photo. I raced to set up my tent, dug into some grub with an epic view, and then marched back to the lakefront. Nearly, or over a thousand people a day get day permits for here, so it's a busy, busy trail. But the big advantage to camping just down that way is when it comes to be sunset, you got it to yourself like this. This is absolutely unreal. Unreal to have something like this to yourself. Conditions have gone horrible. It's become really overcast. No definition, but I don't even care. This is so good. I love these rocks here in the foreground, but I'm not sure they balance with this scene, so I might just look around a bit. In hindsight, I definitely hiked too far. I probably would have been better off hiking to the middle lake than back down to my car in the dark. I'm too close. The middle lake was better, but I'm here. I really wish that I had some light. This overcast stuff really kills this. But it's still a beautiful spot and I think the photo is still okay. Uh, the overcastness helps bring out the blue a lot more. So there's that. I've also added a polarizer which is helping bring out that blue even more and letting you show how clear the water is. It's so clear. It's incredible. And then um, I've got a three stop hard grad ND on. And now I'm kind of just waiting. I think I'm going to wait until it's like almost blue hour or just the early part of blue hour because then at least I'll have some color in the sky. Right now it's just gray and the gray on blue just it's not really doing it for me. So the shot is right now F11 about one second and I'm actually going to probably slow that down to like eight seconds as it gets darker. The wind has picked up and it's gotten really cold. It's gonna be a cold night tonight in that tent, which I hope hasn't uh, blown away. No, actually I can see it. I can see my tent from here. Kind of cool. Anyways, the photo's okay. In fact, for a split second, some like of this high level cloud dissipated and I got a little bit of definition with some clouds. But I think the real problem actually isn't the light. It's that when you're this close to the mountain peak, it doesn't have as much drama. It's not as peaky. It doesn't peak out as much. It doesn't look as tall. It kind of looks flat and rounded. And maybe it would be better down at the middle lakes. And I'll be back at it tomorrow morning. I'll see you there. Peace.